Cassell, I'm also a principal at ARO. And I'm Adam Urinsky, also a principal at ARO. And we are a 20 person office located in uh, Manhattan. Um, and we do a really wide range of work. And we've always purposely uh, uh, gone after as diverse a body of work as, as possible. So we do everything from uh, recently we completed 1,100 square foot uh, uh, low income housing prototype using the German passive house um, standard, all the way to uh, our proposal for rising currents, which was the redesign of Lower Manhattan, which was around 650 acres um, of Manhattan. And I mean, the current work that we're doing is kind of speaks to that diversity. So we have everything from uh, a residential project to uh, uh, work for a nonprofit uh, theater uh, company here in New York City to uh, work for several universities, planning studies for Harvard Architecture School, uh, Cornell Architecture School, University of Michigan uh, College of Architecture and Urban Planning, and a new dormitory for Tulane University. Uh, other, we also, in like the rising currents, we have our uh, regular projects and some paid uh, projects. We usually have research projects that are going on uh, in addition to sort of our standard architecture or planning projects right now. We're doing uh, research actually for the GSA, which is a government services uh, agency, and we're uh, researching uh, the role of design excellence in uh, our architecture for uh, the federal government. So we've been working on that for around six months. And it's, that's a sort of pure uh, research project. Other times it's been looking at the global warming or the effects of climate change on Manhattan. Sometimes it's looking into a material or conceptual thing, some sort of way that we keep uh, thinking and, and uh, 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 keeping ideas moving within the office. Yeah, we very much like the diversity of program types, project types that we do uh, to get the cross fertilization between them of ideas and have kind of fostered that you know, from the very beginning when we started the firm. It's really a consistent part of what we've done, that breadth of work. Actually, what is architecture? I think that um, we believe in spaces and buildings and cities that actually engage users very directly and um, believe in a design that evolves through use and um, gains its life and meaning through the use of people. So um, for us, design is about engaging the client, or engaging the site, understanding all of the project parameters, and then trying to create a modern proposal that allows for people to interact with space in a, in a productive and kind of energizing fashion. And I guess, uh, what is architecture? I mean, in, in some ways, it, it, it's really one of the things that mediates between you and the world around you. And, and that can happen at the scale of just your hand going on a doorknob and, and the materiality of that to how you know, a building for a university can, can uh, sort of convey the sort of ideals and uh, what that university is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the fact that so many people can explain what architecture is in so many different ways is why it has that richness uh, over time. Yeah, I think, speaking to what uh, Kim and Steven said, I think this the social dimension of uh, architecture and design is something that gets us very excited in terms of the potential to um, create relationships between yourself, others, and the world around you. But I think it's also the material reality of how things are made that can add um, quality to how you live. So um, form, material, how they're put together, um, and how they um, mediate, as Stephen said, in very specific ways sometimes to, between yourself and your surroundings. The Judd, uh, uh, we've been working on a project for uh, uh, restoring Donald Judd's house in Soho that we've been working on for six years. years. Six years. <laughs> um, and in some ways, Judd's work and uh, I can sp uh, speak to this really, the, uh, how a sculpture engages the world is, is, is actually has a lot of alignment in how we think about uh, architecture. Yeah, that there's a kind of directness between a work of architecture and um, the meaning that it conveys to a person or to a group of people, and that we think about um, at its best, and it takes a tremendous amount of effort and energy to do this, but the um, this kind of um, uh, embodiment of, of our ideas through how you use and experience a form in a very direct way, in a very deep way, is something that we strive for you know, through our work. And also try to do it differently each time. Like we really, we're not compelled by um, um, a particular um, 
formal or um, conceptual framework for every project that has to be the same, but we're really excited by the possibility that each circumstance can give rise to a kind of particular solution and design that, that has vitality and, and significance for that context. I think architects should be as engaged in um, life as I hope every person is in their own way. Um, I think uh, architects should um, not be bound by the kind of conventions of how in the past maybe architects have worked or communicated. I think that a broader engagement with problems um, and, and ideas is important. And I think, um, so we uh, are not, uh, don't respect kind of the traditional boundaries of what architecture might have been, you know, which is um, formal or compositional um, uh, limitations, but are interested in things like the GSA and EA project that are more about concepts and, and relationships between ideas as opposed to strictly um, making tangible space. So I think um, thinking on multiple levels simultaneously is important. So I mean, that's... And one, I mean, once you accept that uh, uh, architecture is one of the major ways that people mediate between them and the, the world around them and society around them, then one of the roles of architects is to is help. Um, almost become an advocate for the people who are using the buildings, an advocate through design. And so to really understand how, um, uh, how people can engage the world around them through architecture and how can they sort of push, whether it's the uh, ideas or materiality or construction or, or sustainability, mm -hmm. that uh, everyone's going to be using buildings in, in the world and the built environment. That's the nature of what it is. And our role is to be an advocate for, for these people, to sort of push those ideas further and push uh, push architecture further. Yeah, I think that it's, um, there's definitely this responsibility to uh, continue to maybe push the envelope a little bit in terms of the ways that we practice. So again, not necessarily st sticking to traditional roots of saying that we build buildings or houses, but that we design these spaces that have, that are engaged with broader networks of people um, and broader sites. Uh, and those spaces might be concept, you know, might actually translate into conceptual frameworks like the GSA study or other types of planning studies where it's about um, trying to come up, uh, trying to propose ways that a client or a, uh, an organization can engage a broader set of, you know, a broader group of people um, through a series of design ideas. But I think it's it's definitely the interweaving of of the technical and the you know in the reality of real you know real the possibility of real design space and then the sort of conceptual that is um, what we try to navigate and what I would say is a responsibility as a, as an architect um, and a designer and an educator and whatnot. Yeah, you know what? Just to add to that, I think one of the things that we've done historically because we. Um, practice is really what we do full time. We, we do teach all of us, but we primarily practice, is we also think there's expertise in how you deal with problems and solve complex problems right. that are is important. And so um, I think that uh, the ability to coordinate and manage um, and, and uh, framing a problem uh, and not just solving it, but also framing the terms on which a problem is studied and, 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 um, and um, or resolved is, is an important part of what we do. We put a lot of tremendous amount of time and uh, energy into that as well. So I think that's an important part of what we think of as being architecture as well. I think there's a, a couple of different ways to uh, do that. If you think of innovation in terms of material or technology, uh, technology in terms of design tools that, that you have, they're, they're all um, the, the importance is really how can they further the goals of what you're doing with design. Um, I, I don't think the innovation for itself is important. It's the innovation in service of uh, the ideas that you're trying to push for that specific design. So you may pull into your toolkit as you're designing something that's been done for hundreds of years, and there may be at the same time dealing with parametric design or a grasshopper script. <coughs> you know, we as an office really try to figure out what's the best uh, ideas that we can apply, um, uh, whether technological, uh, material, conceptual, uh, at this time for this project. Whether, and that means if you're looking for the best, then innovation is part of that. That you're trying to see what is out there and, and how can those further, uh, further how you're thinking and, and working on architecture. And that, I think that innovation 
isn't, which is what you're touching on, isn't necessarily limited to thinking about the tools we use or the um, or the tectonics or material processes or, or those types of things, but is also about actually the design process itself. So sometimes we step back and in talking with a client try to innovate or think of a different way of approaching a project. We might do that in collaboration with a client or when we're actually pursuing a project, but it could be that the innovation is actually very much as, as much about the process as it is about uh, any particular fabrication technique or any particular um, sort of design aesthetic. It might be that the innovation all exists in in how you how we structure again in collaboration with the team or with the client how we're going to go about coming up with great ideas for something whether those ideas are are strategies or frameworks or whether those ideas are actually um, program based or space based things for a particular you know institution. If you talk about networking in terms of our relationship to clients and our, our team and our colleagues, whether those are colleagues through working on projects or through teaching our peers here in New York. Um, from a project perspective, we rely a lot on the expertise of our collaborators in the design team and are actually believe really strongly in, in a true sense of collaboration, which is that we uh, put teams together in consultation with the client who we think are best for any given project and who can actually bring something to the table and deliver something that's appropriate for that client and for their goals um, and really rely on them to, to be part of the process so that, so that it's a back and forth, you know, working whether it's with landscape architect or a structural engineer or with other architects. We've done a lot of collaborations with other architects. Um, I think in terms of like our, our community here in New York, there are, we have a lot of peers, both well, I guess in the Northeast at academic institutions or here in the city, who we rely on for you know for advice and, and emotional support, and guidance, <laughs> and, and inspiration, humor, and, inspiration, and, but also absolutely. you know who you can go to to talk about other networks of builders and consultants and yeah. um, and that's there's that's actually a great a great resource. I yeah, I mean I, I think. Uh, uh, part of the way we think of architecture is it's really setting up a set of relationships yeah. within a building and within space and over time. And really the practice of architecture is the same thing, that you're setting up these long-term relationships with people that you collaborate with, with clients that you collaborate right. with, hoping everyone's incredibly opinionated and everyone has amazing ideas. Sometimes they push against each other, mm -hmm. sometimes they work in concept, and sometimes you know that you need to step back to allow someone else's uh, idea to uh, to grow. So part of that is is trying to have a network of people that you love to collaborate with, and uh, um, you know, working with Iamoto Scott and Alliance for Downtown New York, the, right. the um, uh, ADNY planning project where we brought in nine other, designers, other designers to test our ideas artists. and push yep. forward and push us further. You know, that was an amazing experience and and something that. Uh, uh, you know, we try to design the process as much to uh, to get the most out of uh, uh, networking and get those out of the people around us. I think that uh, obviously, as we do projects, it, it's sort of that global perspective. As we do projects, I would say I'm thinking of it from a management perspective. But as we do projects that are remotely located, we rely on using the internet and online tools a lot more for communication with the team and for uh, communication with the clients. So a lot of live meeting, you know, sorts of activities um, that allow us to run a job with a team that's located in many different places for a client that's remotely located. And, um, so that would be a very practical project management based response. Well, on the other end, it's access to ideas. I mean, architecture, yeah. so much of uh, what we do, I mean, we do, when we design, we design a lot of versions. We're an iterative office who does 10, 20, 30 versions just over and over again and then edit through that in the same way, uh, sort of the access to information and ideas research. on the web. Yeah. And that research is, you know, completely opens up. Um, through uh, through the web, but, um, but at the same time, when you're designing with iterations, you need to be able to edit yeah. and in terms of what the quality is that you can find uh, online, which is all over the place. Right. Um, so it, it's like turning on an enormous uh, faucet of uh, information and knowing how to pull out uh, sort of selected pieces that can really help uh, help you as an office and as an individual. Yeah, I think it's been great in terms of just publications online, so like your publication right. or places. Um, other architecture 
collecting you know um, links to other publications. So I think just in terms of having a sense of what's out there, you know, you're not waiting each month for the, the magazine to show up anymore and understanding, but there's a real flow now, mm -hmm. you know, kind of continuum. Now that doesn't mean that all of it is, is necessarily of interest or good, but it's there and you can kind of sat, sample it. And, and, um, I think it's important <coughs> to have a basis. You know, we're probably all gonna speak from our own educational experience, but especially today, I think it's important to have um, the possibility of having a depth of knowledge about history and theory of architecture. Um, just because uh, the more you practice architecture, the more you realize that, you know, we as architects and society has been there before in different ways, which are you know, e evolving. There, nothing is ever like it was in the past, but there's things we can learn from how problems were solved and, and um, um, uh, architecture was developed in prior uh, eras, so I think that's important. Um, and I'm surprised, having taught a number of different places, that um, uh, courses in history, um, which again, I don't see as a direct template for what we should do in the future, but as something to build a foundation of your own knowledge, I'm always surprised that, those, that there are not as many offerings of history that, as I would have thought. And I think you still need a very strong formal um, um, uh, education as well in terms of design. Um, maybe you guys want to speak about other things, but I think the history and the theory, which which, which um, we all got in, in our education, I think. thing to potentially look for then in terms of any given program is really some level of diversity in, in you know, diversity in faculty, and obviously diversity in course offerings, because I think it's important to learn about new technologies, but also learn about simpler things like diagramming and sketching and drawing so that, so that there's a balance of the tools that we use because you really need to draw on all those tools to kind of engage the types of projects that you'll be faced with, I think, moving forward. So it sort of touches on the history part and technology part, but knowing that you can, you can get an experience where you're engaging really strong faculty in those different areas, I think is really important. You know, along that line, the other thing you need is you don't just need a strong faculty or you, right. just, you need a strong students. Yeah. That you right. need to be in. And peers. that's why your, your question about networking is that's it's, the network that you're setting yeah. up for, uh, for your professional career. So right. if you have strong people that you can have a dialogue with in the middle of the night while you're drafting, that's just right. as important right. as the Absolutely. professor who you're culture meeting in the morning, that culture. Yeah. Yeah. That it's, could be a small phenomenal. group of peers or a big group of right. peers. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about size, it's really about like quality and like yeah. some level of you know relationship where you can engage the And we've probably you. we've probably all found that those people we have some connection to, to twenty Today. five years oh, later. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So it's it is important. You know, I guess I always thought of the office as just like any other design project. That you're constantly adjusting and designing and changing, setting up relationships within the office. It just happens to be a never ending design project that you're con it's constantly evolving and that's both uh, exciting and really fun um, and also can be frustrating but it, it you you have to think of it critically in the same way that you think about all your other design projects you just you're designing a process and you're designing a, a, um, a group of people to work with and then collaborate with um, so uh, that, that's what's really enjoyment it's also we always said it's like uh, changing things in the office is like changing a tire in a moving car <laughs> <laughs> um, because it, it takes so, you know, it's so difficult to change something as you're designing, as you're working, as you're trying to figure out how you're going to eat, right. um, and pay, you know, uh, pay people, but that, that's the sort of challenge and the fun. Yeah. yeah, you sort of have to be, I think, a jack of all trades, and I don't think that you necessarily have that perspective as a student, per se, or even as a, as a recent graduate, but I think to really have a successful practice and kind of do the work you want to do, you have to have many, many skills that you're, you know, sort of using simultaneously all the time, whether it's about dealing with clients or working with people in the office or working with our, you know, consultants. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you really have to, like, the, the design of the practice and maintenance of that and care that that takes is as important as, as any kind of project that goes out of the office for a client. Mm -hmm.